All right, so this is a video that a lot of you have been requesting. So I've got everything set up for our neighborhood Halloween show. And uh, I was gonna go ahead and give you all a, uh, an overview of the musical Tesla coil setup, basically what's involved in it, kind of how it works, I'll give a quick, you know, high level overview. So starting out here on the ground, we've got our counterpoise earth ground. So it's essentially just a wire mesh and uh, that's laid out and is connected to the, you know, essentially the earth ground. It provides an artificial ground. Um, the Tesla coil itself is connected here to that RF ground and that RF ground connects to essentially the bottom of the secondary coil. So the secondary coil is this big, huge coil. This is the one with, you know, 2,200 turns of copper wire on it. And uh, at the top of this coil, you know, it's one singular piece of wire. It connects up here to the top load or toroid. And that is the high voltage end. So the Tesla coil circuit, the secondary side circuit, the one that's got the high voltage, essentially forms a resonance circuit with the ground mesh being one plate of the capacitor in the circuit, and then the surface area of the toroid being the uh, other plate of that capacitor. So essentially that is in parallel with this giant coil of wire, which is an inductor. And that forms what is known as a LC circuit, resonant circuit. So that circuit is excited by the primary coil, which is this coil here. Now that coil has its own resonating capacitor, which is this giant brick of capacitors in here. And it forms its own resonant circuit. And the resonant circuit of the primary and the secondary are matched so that you know, matched resonance circuit is where you get a lot of the voltage amplification. Uh, with, you know, a regular transformer, you know, the ratio of the transformer for like this is, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe a thousand to one, but the voltage gain is much higher than a thousand to one in a Tesla coil, and that's due to resonance rise, which you only get with a resonating circuit. So that capacitor and the primary are driven by you can kind of see it back here. There's a very, very large um, H-bridge. So H-bridges are common in driving motors and solar inverters and all sorts of other stuff. Um, but really what, what it does is, is it takes the DC stored on these blue capacitors, which is a with 650 volt DC bus, chops it up into the AC and injects it into the primary LC circuit. So, when we're doing that and making a spark, essentially what happens is, is we, you know, we start chopping up that DC and feeding it into the primary circuit at about 110, 112 kilohertz. And the current in the primary circuits essentially starts to build. So it starts off, you know, maybe around you know, 100 amps, something like that. And it builds over the course of about 10 cycles to well over 2000 amps flowing in this circuit here. And it's 2,000 amps at probably around 16 to 18,000 volts on the primary. And again, that voltage rise is due to nothing more than the resonating effects of this capacitor and this inductor here. Then that energy, you know, it's a huge magnetic field. It couples into the, um, to the secondary circuit, which then has its own resonant rise effect. And in addition to that, you also have a turns ratio. So those two factors are what take you from, you know, first a, you know, a, a 240 volt DC input or 240 volt AC input, excuse me, to a 600 volt, 650 volt DC bus to 16,000 volts. And then off the top, we're looking at anywhere between a half a million, maybe 800,000 volts. So the whole spark is, is generated in, in and around 100 to 200 microseconds, only about eight to 10, sometimes up to 15 RF cycles of 110 kilohertz. And that, in that period of time, we pull somewhere around a megawatt of continuous energy out of this capacitor bank while we are creating the spark. So the whole spark, which you know is gonna come off of our breakout point here, this guy here, 
it's going to form, you know, and come down to the uh, counterpoise ground. That spark is, you know, anywhere between, you know, 10, 12 feet, something like that. That whole spark is, is formed in, in less than, you know, typically anywhere between 100 and 300 microseconds. It's very, very fast. And then the, it'll shut off for a few milliseconds, at which point the, the big blue capacitor bank down here will recharge from the AC mains power and it'll be ready for the next shot in, you know, a couple of, my, a couple of milliseconds essentially. So the duty cycle on this is very low, but, you know, our perception of it is that it's continuous. So moving on from there, we have our fiber optic input. So the fiber optic input is what we use to control the Tesla coils. So they come back here to the controller. So the fiber optic input essentially is a digital interface, the receive transmit interface to each of the Tesla coils. And this is the Tesla coil controller. So it, its job is to take MIDI data from a computer. So the MIDI data is essentially produced in a piece of DOS software. In my case, I'm using Logic, Apple's Logic Pro, and that's fed via USB. The controller essentially interprets that signal, chops it up, and sends commands digitally over this fiber optic interface over to the Tesla coils. It's fiber optic because you don't want, you know, the computer that you're touching and connected to to be connected to a very noisy high voltage instrument, you know, not only from a safety perspective, but from a functionality perspective as well. It's, you know, it's quite important. Um, a few other interesting fun facts people typically ask me about these is what's the power draw? So in my case, we are feeding off of uh, a residential. 240 volt AC split split phase bus. Um, we can draw upwards of 60 to 70 amps for very short periods of time, but you know, generally speaking, this system is rated for up to 50 amps continuous. Uh, in general, though, when I run most of my shows, each coil is running at around uh, 30 amps AC. You know, for the most part, average. And again, you know, it changes as the frequency or break rate of the, of the coil changes. And then that's all fed back. I've currently got it wired directly into 100 amp breaker at the panel here. So I have the breaker taken apart for another project, putting in a sub panel for some other stuff, but that's neither here nor there. Um, another question that I get asked a lot is how does the Tesla coil actually make music? And so the cool thing about a Tesla coil is when you make these, you know, these big arcs of plasma, etc., they essentially uh, break down the air from a gas and turn it into a plasma. Now the process of converting a gas to a plasma is a very violent um, process that involves a lot of energy. And after it's done, the air um, actually expands due to the heat generated when it, you know, it forms a plasma. That displacement of air generates a pressure wave. And so that pressure wave we can hear. And it's a pretty substantial pressure wave because the arc itself is quite large. You know, like we were saying a minute ago, it can be anywhere between like 10, 12 feet, sometimes bigger. And it can be upwards of, you know, a couple inches in diameter. So it's a very large surface area. And so just like a speaker cone, when it moves in and out, that speaker cone essentially moves or displaces air and creates the pressure wave that we can hear. Tesla coil essentially does the same thing, but with a plasma instead of a speaker cone. And so these Tesla coils being solid state, i.e. they're, you know, they're driven by transistors and solid, solid state electronics, as opposed to the original spark gap design, we can control the rate at which the, you know, the coil makes sparks, essentially sparks per second. We usually call it the break rate. And that break rate is controlled via that fiber optic interface. So as an example, if we wanted to play um, a middle, middle A on a keyboard, you would normally, you know, oscillate your speaker cone at 440 hertz. So in the case of the Tesla coil, we do the same thing. We essentially make 440 sparks per second, and that sounds like a middle A. 
just like any other note, we can, you know, change that break rate on the fly, you know, via the, via the software on the computer and the Tesla controller. And that is synced up to, usually we'll, we'll play some background audio, you know, through a speaker system or something, but vast majority of the audio is actually coming out of the Tesla coils and it's quite loud. You know, these Tesla coils, these two particular ones can produce, produce an audio pressure wave that's upwards of 115 dB, you know, when you're relatively close, like where I'm sitting here, when I'm controlling them, you usually have to wear hearing protection. Otherwise it's, you know, you have a bad day. Well, anyway, I hope that gives you a good overview. If you have any other questions, comment, and uh, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching.